What's up, wrestling fans? We get a couple of Q&A questions here <clears throat> that I'm going to get to. Um, and also, Tony Khan reveals a new AEW signing already. The captain, Sean Dean, has officially signed with AEW. AEW president and general manager Tony Khan took to Twitter this afternoon to thank Dean for his service to the country as a member of the United States Navy. So, helped AEW uh, with COVID during the pandemic. And they put him on the roster. Sean Dean is AEW bound. So, very interesting stuff. Uh, Sean Dean signed. Captain Sean Dean signed. By AEW, uh, so there's some news for you there. Look forward to that. Looks like looks like a uh, looks like a good sign prospect potentially. Don't know that much about him myself, but uh, you know what I mean. Always appreciative if somebody serving the country looks like a badass. Sean Dean does, and we'll see what we can do out in AEW. Plus, we got a big weekend coming up. A lot of people, a lot of guys in the questions here on Patreon, I see the same question. Who do you think it's going to be? Who do you think it's going to be? I think we talked a lot about this last night on Out of Nowhere, so I really don't want to talk about it again. You know what I mean? Because I already gave kind of my ideas and predictions about as, you know, as far as that goes, so I don't necessarily want to do that again. Um, let me see. Uh, it was, uh, I had two, two people sent me links. Which one is this? Jor Jordan sent me... Uh, Chris Jericho reveals he'll be a regular commentator on a upcoming AEW show. I'm not surprised. Um, it looks like every uh, now not everything is perfectly sensical, but it's always 90% ballpark, says Jericho. Um, six months down the line, it might happen again, but you'll know the seeds are planted, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, Jericho talks a lot about this. Yeah, so it looks like we're going to get a lot more Jericho on commentary. So more more Chris Jericho on commentary. But, you know, that's a good thing in my opinion. I mean, like I said, I we all know how desperate and sore I am to want to do commentary for these companies. Not only do I want to do play-by-play -play and call off the rope, clothesline by Jericho, not only do I want to do that, but I would love to be a heel goofbag. I want to be that guy, and I want to live it, man, of this. I want to be the new Bobby Heenan, you know what I mean? That's that's what I really want to do, you know? That'd be really fun. I mean, that's not really what I want to do. but So Jericho, though, is the closest to that that I've seen, and so I appreciate that. So if we get more of Jericho doing that, that'd be great. So Max, Max, you, uh, what is this, Maxwell? Maxwell sent me a link about uh, Jericho being on commentary more. And I would say, yeah, man, I, I think I'd be down for that. So, Max, thanks for sending me that. Um, this next one came... By the way, thanks to Colonel Stutters, who became a $25 producer. Colonel Stutters is going to have his name added to the producer category, man. He's got a nasty, thick beard, too. Colonel Stutters, you got a nice beard, brother. No doubt about it. And Justin... Uh, Justin sent me a clip of, I don't know what this is. Joe, this is you. This is me. Joe, this is you. I How I imagine you at your jobs. What the hell are you saying? Don't be this guy. Oh, God. What is this going to be? Oh, God. <laughs> Look at this. That's me. Oh my god. Is this like a is this real or is this like a comedy skit? Hi, Gene. It's Steve from Synthesaurus Software. How are you? Uh, we're the worldwide leader. I'm fine. Good, good. Love to describe our new platform and get you onboarded. You know, it's a great opportunity. Okay, for you. I got thirty seconds. Go okay. ahead. Okay. Well, basically, it's a drag and drop. <laughs> it's a drag and drop data system. Is it okay if I go thirty-five? No, just I'm, you go know, ahead. just play with it. All right. It doesn't sound like anything <laughs> that I would understand or know about or care about. I've never done cold calling, by the way. I don't know what the hell you're talking about. No, I think you'll actually be caring about it quite a bit. Maybe. <laughs> oh my God! Who made this? This channel only has a hundred subs. They deserve it like more. Oh my God, this is funny as hell. Oh my God. It doesn't sound like anything that I would understand or know about or care about. No, I think you'll actually be caring about it quite a bit. 
maybe maybe uh, maybe too much at some points. I've, I've felt in my life. If you ask my wife, a we don't have time to meet really with outside salespeople, and B. Oh my God! I don't even know where you're located, but. Well, how about C? I know where you're located, and well, this takes so little time. But hey, little time is you know, little time is still time at all, right? So I know that you have time on, you have less time on. Okay, why don't I get back to you, man? If you were lucky enough to get a guy like this this long on the phone call, on a cold call, this guy. I mean, the fact that this guy. I know that this is a skit, and it's not even real. Most of the time, people just hang up, but. If you actually had someone on the call this long and you and you talked like this, like it'd be like, wow, you just, I mean, l l wait a minute, let me go back to the beginning of this. What would I do? Let's. What company is this? A company that the software is an order taking input system that saves the customer's time, or that's much faster than the former software. That's all it says. I don't know what software this is. I don't understand. Let me hold on. This is Jane. Hi, Gene. It's Steve from Synthesource Software. How are you? Uh, we're the worldwide leader. I'm fine. Oh my God! Don't say how are you. From Synthesource Software. How are you? Uh, we're the worldwide I'm leader. I'm fine. And then you get an answer, and he well, he didn't give a shit. Never say how are you. First of all, never say how are you. Second of all, never say how are you, and then just bulldoze over the guy's answer. Good, good. Love to describe our new platform and. Get you onboarded, you know, it's a great... Don't love to describe it. Describe it. Oh, my God. All right, let's start this over. Hold on. I can't believe... Justin, thanks for sending me this. This is... <laughs> this is not me, by the way. This is Gene. Hi, Gene. It's Steve. From Hi, Gene. Uh, this is... This is... This is... This is Joe Cronin calling from Synthesaur Software. And the reason for my call is we have this brand new platform of software right now that's saving people a ton of time and it's cutting edge stuff. Right now, uh, Gene, I'm going to make this as quick as possible. Uh, how long is it taking you right now to process orders on your software? Hey, listen, I'm not interested in this shit. You know, I've got a system. We're busy as hell. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, Gene, listen, I understand. There's no doubt about it. I wouldn't call you if I didn't think that this software could save you time, and it will save you time. Uh, so, Gene, if 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 I could just ask you another question real quick. Uh, Gene, as far as your software and processing of orders are taking right now, how long is it taking you to process your orders, Gene? Who is this? I don't even know what the hell this is. You just Did someone tell you to call me, or did you have an appointment? Oh, no, Gene, I, as I said, my name is Joe Cronin. I'm calling from Synthesaur Software, and, you know, a company like yours actually utilizes our software a lot of time. We've saved tons of companies a whole lot of time. People are operating 60% more efficient than they were before. So you matched up with those properties as someone that we could save money and time. So that's why I'm calling you is probably recommended in the system somewhere. But, Gene, how long are you taking to process your orders right now, Gene? Oh, uh, orders take 10 minutes, about 10 minutes to process. And I got people processing all day long. So, you know, I really got to get back to that. I got to monitor the floor and, and make sure these things are going through. I, don't, I really don't have time right now for meetings or anything like that. Hey, listen, uh, Gene, I can understand this. And I'm going to make this really quickly, uh, quick, quick for you. Okay, right now. So would you say, Gene, that you guys are processing so many orders that you're processing orders like into the night, like the next day, there's orders from the previous day that didn't get done? Or are you finishing all your orders in a day? Uh, none of it's getting done. We do it. It goes over to the next day to the next day. We're never done processing orders. We're hiring new people all the time. We need to hire more people. We're super busy, as I said. Okay, well, Gene, well, that sounds like you guys are very busy, obviously. So with that being said, Gene, here's the thing. Um, my, if, I could, if I could show you our software, and our software could save you five minutes per order, would you say that that's worth taking a look at? Uh, you know, I, I don't know. I doubt it will save us that much. It'd probably save a minute or two minutes or three minutes. And right now, to set up an appointment and do a schedule just to save a minute or two right now, I don't even have that time to do that. Gene, I understand that. But I am talking about five minutes, guaranteed five minutes. If I could save you five minutes per order, you'd end up having to hire less people. You wouldn't have so much turnover to the next day. You'd get more of these 
uh, orders processed, all your orders processed and finished in a day so you'd know what the next day was going to look like. Gene, if I could do all that, wouldn't you say it'd be worth taking a look at? It might be. T- it might be maybe, but I just don't think we, you know, really, I don't even know. I just can't imagine it. Gene, let me tell you this. You said it takes you 10 minutes to process your orders. Our software has been implemented by several companies in your same situation. Now, in, in, in life, when you find out something is better, you upgrade, right? But sometimes it's hard to get out of the old habits. But if I told you this, Gene, not only do I believe the software is going to save you five minutes, our software processing for what you're doing takes on an average of two to three minutes. So, Gene, we are actually probably going to save you eight or seven minutes on every order right now. Would you say that that would be worth your time to take a look at it? Yeah, that's, um, that's, if you could really do that, that's pretty crazy. So if we could save you seven minutes per order, you would definitely be interested in a presentation that would take 15 or 30 minutes. I could come in and show you the software. Uh, I guess it depends how much it costs um, and things like that. Well, Gene, I mean, we're going to go over all the numbers, and I'm going to show you everything, you know what I mean, to the exact number. There, you know what I mean? We're going to be successful because you're going to save money, save time. This software is going to change your company's whole landscape, and you are the owner, right? Yeah. Well, I'm one of the manage- I'm one of the owners. There's three owners. Okay, Gene. So what, what we got to do is get you, the other owners and managers, into a meeting Give me 15 minutes, 30 minutes, whatever you think. I need. I would like 30 minutes to go over the software with you and talk about everything. All the possibilities. This is going to be a no-brainer because it's going to save you so much time and money. It's, this is going to change the whole landscape of your business, Gene. I have an appointment available next week. How's Thursday uh, looking for you guys at 2 p.m.? Uh, let me uh, hold on a second. Jeff, Jeff, you know, like, boom. Like, what are you doing, dude? What the f- what is this? What did you send me, Justin? What is this? <laughs> From Synthesaurus Software. How are you? Uh, we're the worldwide I'm leader. I'm fine. Good, good. Love to describe our new platform and get you onboarded. You know, it's a great opportunity. Okay, I got 30 seconds. Go okay. ahead. Okay, well, basically, it's a drag and drop. <laughs> it's a drag and drop. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious, bro. Oh, my God, dude. Thank you for sending me that. That's funny. That's... I definitely don't do cold calls. That's wicked funny though. I never did. I never did cold calls. That's, that's funny. Um, what else do we got? Let me see here. Uh, who's this? Uh, Michael. Is this Michael Sachs Jr. who sent me this? Oh, I, don't, I don't even know what this is. Casting a black Superman isn't enough. Here's what I need to see from the reboot. I think I think you know my, you know you you guys okay so people were are upset like oh they want more SJW stuff now I think what they're saying here to be fair to be fair I think what they're saying here is that it's not necessarily like oh change the race of the of the Superman you know or the color of Superman and then yay well, now we can just make a Superman who cares I think what they're saying is that the, the the Superman movie and the story needs to be really good like the the movie and the story needs to be good it can't just be you know, some J.J. Abrams action movie that sucks. But it's okay because it's a black Superman. That's what they're saying. I think that that's what they're saying. They're not saying, like, give us more diversity in the movie. I don't think that that's what they're saying. I think they're just saying the movie just can't suck. You know? You don't want... And you don't want the... I mean, I don't really care about all the SJW stuff, and I really don't think Superman... I don't even... There shouldn't even be another Superman. Henry Cavill is still Superman as far as I'm concerned. But... You know, you don't want the first, if you're going to have a first black Superman, what if it's the worst Superman ever made, you know? That wouldn't be, that wouldn't look good. You know, so that's part of maybe what they're saying. NASA's Perseverance rover takes its first dive onto Mars. If that, yeah, it's crazy. Crazy stuff from Mars. I really, I really got excited by the photos, to be honest. Pretty cool. If they're real. I mean, I think they are, but, you know. You know, sometimes people say to me, Joe, how can you be so stupid to believe we're flying in Mar- to Mars or, to, or to, to the moon or whatever? And I'm like, well, I think 
I think we are because I can see the planes flying up way up in the sky in the clouds. We fly air jets every day all over the world. We play video games where I can shoot a puck and my buddy can score a goal with me at the exact same time, somehow linked up across the world or across the country. We can do stuff with technology that's amazing. And I've seen how smart people are. So I just, I, I, I typically tend to believe it all. Um, but I do think, you know, that some things were farced and faked and stuff like that to enhance certain stuff. And so things are faked. But I do think that we, we can do all those things, though, still, despite some of the pictures being faked, some of the details being faked, some of the things being lies and manipulated a bit. I still think we can do a lot of things because, I mean, just the basic stuff that I see every day that's physical that we all see. WWE Fastlane is March 21st. Uh, we haven't heard anything about McIntyre being announced at Fastlane. This is according to uh, Bradley Z. Sent me this on Patreon as well. Um, we got the WWE just one match announced. We talked about this last night on Out of Nowhere. It's the women's match. Sasha Banks, um, Bianca Belair against Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler. I mean, that will put some butts in the seats. I mean, what you know, that's terrible. That's the only match so far that we've got announced. But the poster for Fastlane just came out, and the poster doesn't ha it has Drew McIntyre featured on the cover of it. So something's going down, I guess, with Drew McIntyre, but we have no idea yet. I'm supposed. I guess this week we'll find out where the what the road to Fastlane is going to be, what the stipulations are, and what's going to go on. I assume there's going to be some kind of qualifying match or some kind of match to determine who's going to face Bobby Lashley at WrestleMania. And obviously, you know, we all predict it would be Drew McIntyre winning. And and if that's the case, that will mean that Drew McIntyre will become a three-time, potentially a three-time WWE champion at WrestleMania. It's pretty crazy. I mean, how many times did Hulk Hogan become the WWE World Champion? Five times, if you count the regular title and then the undisputed title? Five times? Crazy. But he held it, but he, you know, he held it for longer. So, I mean, I guess that's the one thing you can take from that. But yeah, you know, I, I think we think that they want to give Drew his moment at WrestleMania that he didn't get last year in front of nobody. Really was a bummer that that happened. I think Drew has been great. I don't think he's a mega star that's like the next, you know, Stone Cold or The Rock or somebody like that. You know, but I, I just think he, but I think he is a top, you know, impressive talent. He, he reminds me of how Diesel was in the WWE. Now, they tried to do that with Roman Reigns. You know, I, w I would say Drew is more like Sid, Sid. Do you remember when Sid was over, but he wasn't? When, not when Sid was necessarily the bad guy facing Hulk Hogan at WrestleMania 8, but when, around WrestleMania 13 time, where Sid was cheered for, but he wasn't like, you know, Stone Cold or Shawn Michaels or somebody like that. But he was over with a large amount of the crowd, and people really enjoyed him in many ways. Sort of what Drew reminds me of now. Um, but again... You know, in my opinion, Bobby Lashley is about a 6 out of 10. And I think most of the roster is below that with how they perform. I don't think Bobby Lashley is that great. And I'd say Drew is about, I don't know, a 7 or something or around the same thing. So you're really at a drought here, man. But I'll tell you what, Drew McIntyre potentially could be bigger if there was a crowd. You know, to, to, to talk to to bounce off of. He really got robbed of that. He's had all this time to display his charisma and display his creativity and his power on the microphone, and he really never got that. So he's been stuck in, you know, doing stuff with no reaction for over a year. For all we know, the crowds would be behind him huge, and they'd be cheering for him, and it'd be crazy, and he'd be so over or something. We don't even know without the crowd. So, 
you know, what's going to happen at Fastlane? I don't know. But I do know that we're out of questions here. Those are all the questions. Um, somebody said, um, uh, WWE CEO says, AW is an embarrassment to wrestling fans all around the world. Of course, they insult their audience or at least the 700,000 who stopped watching after the debut. What? 700,000 stopped watching after the debut? That's not true. 700,000 stopped watching after the debut? That's not even true. They were... Um, it was about 300,000... Two to three hundred thousand people that stopped watching after the debut. So that's not true. Seven hundred thousand? What? I mean, I think he's mistaking the WWE fans who stopped watching Raw over the last three years. That's seven hundred thousand. What a dumb I mean, that's just a dumb comment, bro. That's really stupid. They did a nine hundred something the other night. NXT is doing a six hundred. Come on. Don't be dumb. Anyway, guys. Tonight's monetize this, and I'm ready. The champ is here tonight on monetize this, baby. Bring it on. I got something for you, daddy. Here's the uh, other videos you might have missed. I'll see you tonight, and shout out to all the new patrons on Patreon, including all the new $25 producers. Big list to get through and to build up over the next couple days. Thank you, and I'll see you then.